This is Apostle Calvin Brown of Christ Be Glorified Ministries, and welcome to another broadcast centered around the kingdom of God. We bring you the message according to the kingdom, and it's a vision that the, the word of the Lord, the message of the Lord causes you to have sight. And so the, the word of the Lord, when the word of the Lord comes to the man of God, the woman of God, many times it is, it is a vision, amen, that God gives to bring the people into the reality that God is showing. There's so much that is in this earth which is presented as a reality which is not God's reality. And therefore it is fake, it is vain, it is vanity, it is folly. And so the message of the Lord is to bring you into the truth so that you will have vision so that you will not throw off restraint. Without a vision, the people perish. They throw off restraint. In other words, instead of doing the work of God, they are doing something else. Amen. They're playing around. They're doing something else instead of the work of the Lord. So you need the vision which is of the Lord, amen. And so the, the message of the kingdom is a message of, of vision, amen. And we are, as ministers, that we have to have the anointing to bring you into the vision, which is of the Lord. So let's go straight to the word, Matthew chapter 6. Beginning with verse 9 is, is what is affectionately called the, the Lord's Prayer. But it is, it is a type of prayer, or it is the framework of prayer, amen, that Jesus gave that we are to give ourselves to. Jesus said in verse 9, In this manner, therefore, pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So God is in heaven. He is holy. And so it is the revelation of the holiness of the Lord, which brings you into the fear of the Lord. Isaiah say that he saw the Lord high and lifted up, and the glory of his train filled the, the, the temple. Amen. And then Isaiah had a vision of the Lord and of his holiness, and he saw his own condition, and it caused him to fall before the Lord and to recognize his own condition as compared or contrasted with the holiness which is of the Lord, which causes the fear of God. Amen. So God is in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. God is holy. His name is hallowed. Amen. And so God from heaven says that your will be done your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So the prayer from the earth realm is for God's will to be done on earth the way that it is in heaven. The will of God, the plan of God, the way that it is demonstrated in heaven is the way that it's supposed to be demonstrated in, in this earth. In heaven, it is a picture of righteousness, of what is right. It is a picture of closeness to God. It is, a, it is a picture of being in the presence of the Lord continually. Amen. And so that is the will of God for this, this earth realm. It is a picture, a picture of praise and worship unto God continually. And that is what is supposed to be demonstrated in this earth realm. Amen. In this, in this earth realm, God is continually bringing his, his kingdom. He is plowing through that which is false. If you want to know what God is doing from heaven in this earth, God is plowing through everything that is empty, everything that is vain, everything that is false. God is destroying the picture of unrighteousness and it is bringing forth the reality of his righteousness as people are born again, as people are healed, as people are delivered and set free, amen, as blind eyes are open, amen, the reality of righteousness is seen in this earth realm, amen, that picture of righteousness just like it is in heaven where there is no sickness, no disease, no blindness, amen, where the, the, the inhabitants of heaven has 
They have access to the presence of the Lord. They see the Lord as, as holy. Everyone that they, they, they keep their, their rights. Amen. There's no breaking of rights or, or rebellion against the Lord. Amen. And so that's what the Lord wants in this in this earth realm. He says, give us this day our daily bread. Amen. So God sustain us each day. Bread represents that which gives life. And so whether it's physical bread or even more profound is the spiritual bread, the truth, the word of God, the sincere bread. Amen. Jesus is the sincere bread. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. We owe the Lord everything. Amen. Oh, yeah. That everything that we are and everything that we have, we owe to the Lord. Amen. And so that we ask the Lord to forgive us of our debts, our sins, amen, as we forgive those who are indebted unto us. In other words, by his spirit, amen, by his example, amen, that, that we forgive just the way that the Lord forgave us, amen. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen so it is god's kingdom it is god's power amen forever and ever amen so th there is the truth of god amen it is it's been displayed even in this prayer from jesus we see that all belongs to god and he's above all that that is the reality of heaven that is the reality of those that know according to the patterns of heaven amen but that is not what is always demonstrated in this earth realm and just because something is demonstrated in this earth realm doesn't mean that it is that it is the truth amen so in psalms 115 verses 15 and 16 Psalms 115, verse 15 and 16. It says, Ye are blessed of the Lord, which made heaven and earth. The heaven, even the heavens, are the Lord's, but the earth hath he given to the children of men. Amen. So heaven belongs to God. The earth he leased it out unto the children of men. And then Psalms 24 says, The earth is the Lord's. In the fullness thereof, but he leased it out to the children of men. So we see this partnership between heaven and earth. That earth is dependent on the Lord from heaven, amen, to be sustained, to be kept, to be preserved. And, and it is the, the consciousness, amen, of the Lord that helps preserve the earth. In other words, without the consciousness of the Lord, that earth would go on as if there was no God and make those same mistakes that Satan made when Lucifer was cast out of heaven, when, when iniquity was found in him and his wisdom was corrupted and his beauty was corrupted. Amen. Man would make those same mistakes without that partnership, which is with the Lord. Amen. The Bible says that there's a witness in this earth, even the rains, that God left himself without, did not leave himself without a witness that God gave rain in his seasons and fruitful harvest, amen, and, and, and food and, and things to sustain, amen. In other words, the rain that comes from heaven is, is a witness. And we find out that God, who made heaven and earth, left witness in this earth so that people would not plow along without the Lord. Witnesses. In this earth realm, we are witnesses, amen, of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ in the goodness of God. We are, we are witnesses. We have tasted and seen that the Lord is good. So our witness must be true. It must be a true witness. True witness comes down from above. True witness is sent from the Lord, amen, to be a true witness. Heaven uh, must influence the earth, not, and not vice versa. That heaven affects the earth, amen, 
not vice versa, or not without heaven. Amen. And so God left himself witness. So this earth is a training ground. Amen. It's a place in a time of decisions. Amen. Decisions. Making decisions. It is also a time of discovery. So this earth realm, amen, is positioned in time to be a place where men make decisions to choose that which is right. In other words, that which is right was from the beginning. Amen. It is, it is of the Lord. God is right. God is righteous. God is holy. Amen. With or without the earth, God is right. God is righteous. And God is holy. And God gave earth to man to be a place to make decisions, to choose that which is right, to choose life. Amen. To choose the blessing, to choose the Lord, to acknowledge the truth, to discover the pearl of great price. This, this earth is a time of discovery and making decisions. Amen. This, that is what this, what this earth is. Amen. But this earth was never intended to do without the Lord. This earth was, was never, never, never intended to do without, to do without the Lord. Amen. And so Jesus says, it's more expedient to you that I go away. For if I go away, that the Lord will send the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is in this earth, amen, to, to vindicate, amen, God's, God's people, to vindicate that which is right, to execute judgment against that which is not right, which is unrighteous. To manifest the truth. Amen. And so the Holy Spirit is also the witness, the witness. God Himself, the witnesses in this earth realm. Amen. That God is God. Amen. There's three that witness in heaven the, the Father God, the Word of God, and, uh, and the Holy Spirit. And there are three that witness in this earth the water the blood and the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit witnesses in heaven, even though he has been sent from heaven. Every good and perfect gift comes down from above, from the Father of lights, in whom there's no variableness, nor shadow of turning. So that which is a gift is sent from God from above, and it signifies that it is good. The Holy Spirit was sent from heaven to this earth to be a witness along with the blood of Jesus and, and with the water of regeneration, the, the water, amen, of, of baptism, amen. We are regenerated, amen, and our minds are regenerated to think in accordance unto righteousness, the, the, a clean conscience, amen. And so the blood of Jesus affords us a clean conscience and the water of regeneration, amen, that cleanses us from the filthiness which is of the world. Amen. You don't know, but you must be cleansed from the filthiness which is of the world. That which tries to exist without the Lord is perverted, is corrupted. Amen. You need the Lord to, to institute things and to keep it clean. Amen. And so the, the, the Holy Spirit, amen, is the spirit of burning. Amen. It's the spirit of fire. Amen. It represents, he represents the wisdom of the Lord. And so part of our assignment down here is to be separate from the world, to be a witness. Amen. We're separated from the filthiness which is of the world so that we may be a witness unto God, but we have no, we, we, we have no righteousness of our own. It's like filthy rags. And so we need that which is of the Lord. Amen. And so the word of God, if you receive the word of God by faith, it makes you righteous, but it is the Holy Spirit that brings forth the reality of righteousness. Amen. Keeps you clean and purified. Amen. Keeps you in communion and fellowship with the Lord where you think like the Lord, where the things of God are not strange to you. Amen. So the word of God comes and, and the Holy Spirit brings you into the truth. The reality of the word. He is the spirit of truth. Amen. And so we allow, 
We are in this earth realm. The, the, the heaven belongs to God. The earth he gave to the children of men. So we are in this earth realm, but we can do nothing without the Lord. And so God sent his Holy Spirit. And so we allow God's kingdom to come by our reception of the Holy Spirit, which manifests God's righteousness and truth. So you get that. We're in this earth realm. We do not exist outside of God. When people begin to try to exist outside of God, then the earth begins to be corrupted. And the things that they speak and the things that they espouse are doctrines which corrupt and are not truths, but they are false truths and false realities. Amen. So we're in this earth realm and it's how we embrace the Holy Spirit. Yes, you must embrace the Holy Spirit. Amen. Just like that John embraced Jesus when Jesus walked upon his earth. Just like Mary sat at the feet of Jesus and that was the better part. Amen. Which would not be taken away. You must take the Holy Spirit into your bosom. Amen. You must embrace the Holy Spirit in this earth realm. Number one, this world is cruel. The, the, the force of wickedness and violence in this world is that which tries to snatch you, to seize you. That you if your eyes are not open spiritually, you don't even understand what is going on. The Bible says the sower sows the word, and they which were sown by the wayside, the fowls came and snatched away which was sown. And when Jesus explained that, he says that when the message of the kingdom is preached, amen. Amen. I want you to get that. That that we preach the kingdom and people come against us. Jesus said that the source of the word. Amen. And when the gospel of the kingdom is preached, that's when the devil comes to snatch away the word which was sown. That word which snatch away is to seize violently like a wild animal. Amen. So y'all don't know the force. Amen. God's force is greater, but you don't even know what is going on spiritually. Amen. You, you, you are lackadaisical. Amen. You don't know that you may be meek and mild. Amen. But the devil, he tries to use force. Mm -hmm. The kingdom of heaven suffers violence. The violence taken by force is, a, is an understanding of of the wickedness which tries to seize away that which is of the Lord, to destroy that which is of the Lord. Mm -hmm. God is trying to help you. God is trying to save you. Amen. So the devil comes like a wild animal to snatch away that which was sown. Mm -hmm. And so that you in this earth realm, if you're under the spirit of the world, which is the spirit of Satan, mm -hmm which causes your senses to be dull. In other words, you're not spiritually vigilant, the Bible says, to be vigilant. For your adversary, the devil, goes about as a roaring lion, a wild animal, seeking whom he may devour, whom you resist steadfast in the faith. Amen. And so the devil has no power. The, the, the Jesus has smashed his teeth, but he roars like a lion, trying to to devour he comes to steal kill and to destroy amen and it is accordance to your reception of the holy spirit whether you are vigilant whether you are alert whether your eyes are open whether jesus is lord the the, the lion of the tribe of judah and that you are like him the righteous are as bold as a lion to destroy the works of the devil. For this cause was Jesus manifested. Mm -hmm. To destroy the works of the devil. Amen. Mm -hmm. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Eyes that see, ears that hear, a heart that comprehend. Amen. To receive an anointing. Amen. Your anointing could pass you by if you are clothed with the spirit of the world. 
Amen. That you have an anointing to destroy devils, to tread upon lions and serpents, to, to, to tread upon serpents and scorpions, and upon all the works of the devil, all the power of the enemy. And nothing by any means shall harm you. So that's what Jesus was praying in the Lord's Prayer. That you would operate in this earth realm according to the vision which is of heaven. Amen. And to be clothed with the Spirit. To be filled with the Spirit. To be sensitive to the things which are of, which are of the Lord. Amen. And so it is, it is the, 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 the spirit of the thing. Amen. In this earth realm. It's about the kingdom and the spirit. For us, it is the Holy Spirit which helps us to rule over every wicked spirit because wicked spirits are not just passive in the air. That they go about even in thought realms, amen, to, to affect and infect people's minds. And so the Bible says that you are supposed to know spirits. The Bible says that you're supposed to know which are the spirits of God. Amen. That, that you're supposed to discern spirits. You're supposed to know no one after the flesh. Amen. And in 1 John, 1 John chapter 4, <clears throat> it says, verse 1, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, mm -hmm. but test the spirits whether they are of God. Mm -hmm. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. So by this definition, mm -hmm. that those spirits which are speaking, which are not of the Lord, are called false prophets. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because a, a prophet prophesies that which is of the Lord. Amen. And so a false prophet are spirits which try to uh, deceive, amen, to cause deception, to delude, to cause people to come under false spirits. And so God is, is, is keeping this world by his spirit and by the truth. The Holy Spirit maintains that which is right and that which is true. Amen. And so... It is by our reception of the Holy Spirit, our reception of the truth. The truth belongs to God. And often what man calls truth is not the truth at all, according to God's standard, so that the Holy Spirit does not establish that which is not of the truth. The Holy Spirit will establish that which is of the truth. So, so God created and God established from the foundations of the world that which is right. And the Holy Spirit will maintain that which is true and that and that which is right. Turn with me to Proverbs. The book of Proverbs. Chapter 3. Verse 19. It says, the Lord by wisdom founded the earth by understanding he established the heavens. So, the Lord by wisdom laid the foundations of the earth. Let's say it this way. Wisdom. The Bible says that our wisdom was with the Lord in the beginning. So when the Bible says, let us make man in our own image, Jesus is made unto us wisdom. Wisdom was with God, and wisdom was how God founded or laid the foundations. The word found, it means to establish. The, the word found also is associated with the first. Amen. Something is founded. It's the way that it was, it was created first. Founded means that which is right as it pertains to God. Amen. So the Bible says the earth was founded by the Lord, by his, by his wisdom. Amen. The Holy Spirit is the, is the spirit of wisdom, the Bible says. That in Isaiah chapter 11, and all through the word of God, that, that the Holy Spirit is the spirit of wisdom. He says, 
that our wisdom was with the Lord in the beginning when he founded the earth and laid the foundation. So we're talking about two things here. Since we're talking about wisdom, we're talking about two things. We're talking about the, the physical uh, creation of the earth and we're talking about the spiritual creation of the earth. Amen. And you say, what, are, what do you mean? Since we are talking about wisdom and we're talking about the word foundation. Amen. That's how God builds. Unless the Lord build a house, they labor in vain. God builds by his wisdom. Since we're talking about founding and foundation, we're talking about the principles of God. It, we're, we're talking about the institutions of the Lord. So by wisdom, God started the thing as it pertains to this earth. Everything about this earth, God made it right. Amen. He made it righteous. So God created the earth, but not only that, not just physically, not just physically formed, but in the earth, in the foundations of the earth are, is wisdom which is the, the spirit of the Lord. So that which is of the Lord is of the spirit of the Lord, which is the spirit of wisdom, which was with God at the beginning when he created everything. It is the starting point. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. With all that, get and get understanding. Wisdom is the starting point. Amen. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Wisdom is the beginning. Amen. <laughs> I hope you understand what I'm saying. The foundations of the world, of the earth, is wisdom. It is that part that God sustains because that is the Holy Spirit. Let, let me just say this, and I don't want to get ahead of myself in my message. What remains is, is supposed to be the wisdom of the Lord. So when you talk about remnant, a remnant is that which remains, which is of the Lord, okay? So what does the devil do? The devil tries to destroy foundations. So persecution, think of it as beating. But the devil could never destroy wisdom. The devil can never destroy the Holy Spirit. The devil cannot destroy the founding. That's why people try to get rid of history about the founding fathers. Have you ever wondered why they want to do that? Because it is the institutions of God. When, when God laid the foundations, it is the part that remains. Amen. And so the devil wants to get rid of God's wisdom and replace it with corrupt, wicked wisdom. But he'll never be able to destroy the remnant. It, it, is, it is the part initiated by God. It is, it is that which is of the Lord. Amen. Which, which remains. So therefore, we count it joy when men revile us. Amen. You, you understand? When men persecute us. Amen. For righteousness sake. <laughs> because it's the part we're holding on to the Holy Ghost part that remains. Hallelujah. So though we be beat, hey man, we rejoice. Hallelujah. Because we, we are holding on to the part that remains. Amen. That which is of the Holy Ghost. That which is of wisdom. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. And so if you knew, you would rejoice that the, the promise of the Lord is that is his witness. And that part will never be done away with. And even if they were able to kill your body, the witness would remain. That out of it would flourish the witness which is of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Especially if you have this knowledge. So thank you, Lord. I'm given an opportunity to be persecuted for your name's sake. Oh, sign me up. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. Because something of the Lord will remain. Hallelujah. From the foundation. You don't understand from the foundations. This is the part that God will not do without. Amen. It is that which is of the Holy Spirit. That the Lord is one with the Holy Spirit. Do you think 
that the Lord would allow the Holy Spirit to be destroyed in this earth. No. no. He is God. He would be destroying himself. That is the part that remains from the foundation. Now your eyes are opened to what is trying to go on in this earth realm. So by wisdom, amen, by wisdom the Lord founded the earth. By understanding he established the, the heavens, amen. And so there is a connection. Amen. In Psalms 11. Psalms 11. Amen. I think you got that part. Hallelujah. Psalms. Chapter 11. Verse 3. It says, if the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? So it's a rhetorical question. That was trying to destroy the foundation. <laughs> Amen. Now, if that were possible, then we would have nothing. <laughs> Amen. If the foundations could be destroyed, the righteous could do nothing. That doesn't mean that you allow the devil to try to destroy the righteous foundations which are of the Lord. You, you stand on the foundations of the Lord. You fight for that which is of the foundations of which is of the Lord. Amen. Amen. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19, it says, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. So iniquity is not a part of the foundations which are of the Lord. And so the Bible says, that the foundations of God standeth sure. That word sure means steady. By this fact, by this seal, in other words, the, God is the king. Amen. Jesus is the king. Amen. They are the king of kings. They have a signet ring. They have a seal. So the foundations of God, they remain sure or steadfast or steady because of this seal. Amen. Let those who name the name of Christ depart from iniquity. We learn that that seal is the Holy Spirit, that we are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. And so that is the signet ring. But it's more than that. The King of King, God himself, King upon his throne, sealed us with the Holy Spirit, which says that we belong to him. And so what that means is that we have entered into covenant with the King to be his. Now, how do we know how to be the Lord? By the Holy Spirit. We are brought into intimate knowledge with the Lord, intimate fellowship, intimate covenant by the Holy Spirit, by being one with the Holy Spirit. So the foundations of God, they remain sure, having this seal. God knows those that are his. The Bible says that they that have not the spirit of Christ are not of his. And so it's, it's the reality, it's not just reading the word. It is the reality of the word. Remember, it is the Holy Spirit that brings you into the truth. The reality. I don't care what this world puts out as truth. You are called to walk in the reality. If the whole world goes crazy, if the whole world is wild, amen, and that is the new norm. People say, come join us into this new norm of where the world is, is wild where there is lawlessness, this is the new way of doing things. This is the new and improved deal. You're supposed to walk in the reality of the Spirit of God, which is portrayed from heaven, righteousness portrayed from heaven, kept by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now you see the power to be a witness. They said that the disciples said, will you restore the kingdom? to Israel at this time. He says, it's not for you to know the times and seasons which are in the hands of the Father. Uh, the Acts 1, 8. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you to be witnesses for me to the, to the different places from local even outward. Amen. To the, rest, to the rest of the world. Amen. And so power, think about it. Power. It is not only to heal the sick and to raise the dead. But the power of God, remember what Jesus prayed, to keep you from evil. Amen. 
And so the, the, the power of God in your life to walk in righteousness and holiness when this whole world has gone to hell in a handbasket, you walk in power of fellowship, amen, with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is real to you and it's affording you the anointing and the power to be a witness to God. The Bible says to be a light in the midst of a perverse and crooked generation. You still remain a light. How are you light? By the power of God, the power of the Holy Spirit to be a witness. The world says that join us, amen, in our debauchery. Join us in our tumult. Join us in our partying, amen. Join us. And you have the power of God to be a witness, not to be ashamed. Jesus says, and that's exactly what he means. He says, if you be ashamed of me in this, in this crooked generation, I'll be ashamed of you, amen, in heaven before my Father and the holy, and holy angels. In other words, you don't even make excuse why you are being holy and righteous in the midst. And you don't be ashamed. I'm, I'm just ashamed yeah, I can't join you, you know. Wish I could, but I got to go to church. No. <laughs> you operate in power. Unless, unless his power is not a witness. <laughs> Man, unless his power, hallelujah, is not a witness. <laughs> Man, if you're ashamed, it's not a witness. <laughs> They must be ashamed. Hey, man. The Bible says you're supposed to be ashamed of the things that you used to do in darkness. They're in darkness. That's right. They they supposed to, you're not supposed to make them feel comfortable. That's right. Amen. <laughs> your your witness is light. Light does not make excuse for the darkness. Hallelujah. Hey, Hallelujah. Man. Hallelujah. You you must get it straight. <laughs> man. So people say people mistake innocence. What they call innocence with what is right. In other words, you will always believe that you are innocent according to the spirit that you operate by. Now, the things that I say are principles. And so I may, I may go right past it. I may keep on teaching. But, but you need to get this principle. You will call yourself innocent according to the spirit that you operate by. So the question is, what spirit are you supposed to operate by? The Holy Spirit. But everybody's not operating. The Bible says everyone has not the spirit of Christ. I say this to your shame. Everyone has not the spirit. Amen. I say this to your shame. And a lot of people believe that that is only talking about, you know, you're saved and, and filled with the spirit. But the word have means to possess or to make your own. Everybody does not possess the Holy Spirit in fear and reverence that way. And so you may call yourself a Christian and yet you're doing things which the glory side calls shame, calls nakedness. It, it calls it being exposed because you're trying to be covered by the world. And so let, let's just say this. If you are under the, the, uh, the spirit of the world, amen. The spirit of the world would provide you covering unless you are confronted by true holiness and, and righteousness. So if you, de let, let's just say this, there are people that persecute Christians. I'm trying to give examples. And they believe that they are right. Saul of Tarsus, he persecuted Christians. He believed that he was right. Why did he believe he was right? He, he did it out of the innocency of his heart. But you say he wasn't innocent. But according to the spirit that he operated by, which was the devil, which was the spirit of the world, it afforded him a cover to make him think that he is right. So what am I doing? I'm challenging you to, to see what spirit you're operating by. Because you will persecute that, that the, 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 the men and women of God who preach the gospel. You need to tread very carefully before opening your mouth concerning the ministers of the gospel. Amen. But you may do it and you believe that you are innocent 
But it wasn't the Holy Spirit that declared you innocent. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It is the, the spirit of the world, or, or, or wicked spirit. That, it's the lust. Let's just say you want to be esteemed as someone that knows something and a, a corrector, a teacher of the wise, and all those, those things. Then you are gullible. You're open to those types of spirits that would afford you cover that you would call yourself innocent because of the spirit. So we see a thing. That's why the Holy Spirit is the spirit that causes fear and reverence unto the Lord. The Bible says about Jesus, spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding, counsel and might, knowledge and of the fear of the Lord and quick understanding of the fear of the Lord. He did not judge according to the seeing of the eyes or the hearing of the ears, but with righteousness he judges. Amen. And so that same spirit is what we judge by, not the spirit which is of the world, but the spirit which is of God. Why? So we'll know the spirits. So that we would not know after the flesh. Not so that we could destroy people, but that we would know according to the spirit, don't judge according to the flesh, not seeing according to the seeing of the eye, hearing of the ear, but with righteousness afforded to you by the Holy Spirit, the spirit who is of the Lord. Amen. So it's the spirit of the thing. Amen. The spirit of the thing which shows if it is instituted by the Lord, the Holy Spirit it establishes and backs up that which is, is initiated by the Lord, started by the Lord, founded by the Lord, the Holy Spirit. Amen. That which is founded by the Lord, the Holy Spirit was there as a witness, a part of the creation. And so he's able to witness a work, whether that work is of the founding, which is of the Lord. Amen. Whether the Holy Spirit is in it. If you can understand what I'm saying. So th there's a word called transformation. The left, which is really that which is, which is of the devil. We put labels on things. And labels bog people down sometimes and causes people to fight and put up a defense. And the preaching of the kingdom is for it's all about kingdoms, what kingdom you are of and what spirit you are of. Right. Amen. We only use words to, to show you in real time what is what is happening. And, and so many people are offended. So the left is trying to transform society. Mm -hmm. And so God says that word transform, they, they are trying to undermine his righteous foundations. The, the, the left and the devil, they cannot um, do those things without trying to take over the foundations to have wicked foundations so that they can build up something that is wicked. It's like the Tower of Babel, which did not succeed, where the devil is trying to build something. And the Bible says that unless the Lord build a house, they are laboring in vain. That word vain means vanity, that which is of the world, that which is of the wind, that which is empty, that which is not of substance. Amen. And so the Lord says you have to confront spirits. Amen. You have to confront spirits, especially those that are trying to undermine that foundation that the Lord started in the beginning. You don't let that those which are of the devil um, begin to build that against the Lord because what they are building, I hear the Lord says, is a siege tower against the Lord. Uh, it, it is a ramp. It, 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 is, it is spiritual warfare. It, it, it is a stronghold. Mm -hmm. what, what the devil builds is, is trying to be a stronghold against the Lord. He has no power of his own, so he uses people mm -hmm. to try to undermine the foundations which are of the Lord. It is up to us for the foundations of the Lord to remain sure, the Lord knows those that are his, that, have, that we have this seal, the seal of the Holy Spirit that says that we belong to God. And out of that, we depart from iniquity and we destroy those 
towers which are of the devil. Those siege <laughs> towers. Those platforms uh, which, are, which are of the devil. Amen. Listen, Elijah had to rebuild God's altar. Many times, that's what revival does. When idol worship is in the land, and that's what's been in the land, that the man of God, and when he confronted the, the false prophets of Baal on Mount Carmel, and, and they wailed all the day and evening, uh, calling upon Baal, and they cut themselves and, and, and tried to get an answer by fire. God is the God, is the only God who answers by fire. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so Elijah had to rebuild the altar, which is of the Lord. Amen. And so we rebuild the altar. We, oh, shun, 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 shun. Mama, she, 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 Mama, she, 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 I could not go on. The Lord says you got to rebuild the altar. You by Baal worship, y'all have torn down the altars of the Lord. They have not been in use. Amen. They've been in disrepair. And so. It is the altars of the Lord must be rebuilt. You must acknowledge those righteous foundations. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. And you cool. You must acknowledge the spirit of a thing. Hallelujah. Whoa, the spirit of a thing from the beginning. Kobo Robo Sandarabos. In Luke. The book of Luke, chapter 9. Luke, chapter 9. All the way down to um, verse 51. <clears throat> verse 51. Now it came to pass, when the time had come for him, Jesus, to be received up, that he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem and sent messengers before his face. And he and as they went, they entered a village of the Samaritans to prepare for him. But they did not receive him because his face was set for the journey to Jerusalem. So I want you to see what's going on. Jesus is set to go to Jerusalem. But as was his customs, his his disciples would be his advanced team. Remember, these days they are, they are traveling by foot. They are traveling by donkeys and things. And so it would take time to get from place to place. He's going to Jerusalem, but they want to make a place ready for him, prepare a place in Samaria. And because something about his face made it obvious that Samaria was, was not his, his final destination, they were offended by that. Amen. And they would not receive him. They would not prepare a place because his face was set to go to Jerusalem. And was, when his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven to consume them just as Elijah did? But he turned, Jesus turned and rebuked them and said, you do not know what manner of spirit you are of. For the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went to another village. But the main thing, there's a lot of things I can preach out of this. But the main thing I want you to see that Jesus says that you don't know what manner of spirit you're of. So what they said, their purposes of their heart, their intents of their heart, was not of the Spirit of God. That's why Jesus said, you do not know what spirit you are of. If it had been of the Spirit of God, Jesus would have been right there with them. But he's saying you're operating by a different spirit. Amen. So very quickly, I'm just going to, I'm not going to turn to it. I'm just going to refer to um, 2 Kings chapter 1. It talked about um, Ahaziah. Let me see if I got that right. Ahaziah. The, 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 the son of Ahab, that 
uh, after Ahab was, had died, was killed, that he was the king. And so he fell from his upper chambers through the lattice. And the fall was so great that he became bedridden because, and he sent a messenger, a servant, to um, inquire of Beelzebub, the god of Ekron, Akron, amen, whether or not he would be made well. So this is the, 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 the Philistine false god, amen, Beelzebub, amen. And so that it was Elijah met that messenger, that servant, and asked him a question, is it because there is no God in Israel that you, that you inquire of the, the God of Akron and Beelzebub and everything? And, and he gave him a message that he would not rise from his bed and he would surely die. In other words, it wasn't, it wasn't the, 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 the ailment that would kill him, but he was actually assassinated, I believe it. But the, so the disciples, James and John are saying, do you want us to call down fire? In other words, to show how big and bad they were in power with God, do you want us to call down fire? He, just, just like Elijah, Elijah called down fire when the, the, the messenger, Ahaziah sent soldiers to take um, Elijah and he called down fire, he killed the first 50. He sent another 50, he called down fire, he killed the next 50. And so the third group that of, of soldiers that came, the commander came begging and pleading and bowing, please let my life be precious to you. And so the angel of the Lord says, you can go with him and everything. And so that's the backdrop of the story. I, I don't wanna get off, but he's saying, the main part I want you to see, he's saying, you're speaking by a different spirit, amen. So it's, it's the spirit of the thing. So even someone that is close to Jesus is speaking by a different, a different spirit. We see it again in the book of Matthew chapter 16, amen. Matthew chapter 16, verse 21 through 23. <clears throat> It says, from that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised on the third day. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, far be it from you, Lord, this shall not happen to you. And then he, Jesus, turned and said to Peter, so he said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are an offense unto me, for you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of men. So Jesus addressed the spirit, which was Satan, who was speaking these things. Mm -hmm. Believe not every spirit. Test the spirits, whether they be of the Lord. <laughs> Amen. That spirit that was speaking was not of the Lord. Mm -hmm. It was actually Satan. Mm -hmm. And so Jesus addressed Satan. Mm -hmm. So again, those that were close to Jesus... He had just spoken, Peter had just spoken by the Spirit, thou the Christ, the Son of the living God. He says, blessed are thou, Simon Barjona. Then in the next breath, the next thing that Peter says is not of the Spirit. Amen. And so it's the spirit of the thing is what I'm trying to say. The, from the foundations of the world, God has declared what is righteous. He has shown what is good. Amen. From the foundations which are of the world. And that image can be obscured by people speaking in thoughts in this, in this world, amen, which present that which is built, which is not of the Lord, that which is trying to be established that the Lord will never establish, amen. And again, that Simon the, the sorcerer, I won't turn there, in Acts chapter 8 it says, Philip went down to Samaria to preach. And many people believe. And the Bible says Simon also believed. And then the apostles came and laid hands on those that, that believed that they may be filled with the Holy Spirit. And when Simon saw that by the laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Spirit was given, he asked them also for this power that whomsoever he laid hands on, 
He offered them money. Amen. That whoever he lays hands on also. That Okay. Simon, the sorcerer, who had made a name for himself, that he was a big man because of his sorceries and his bewitching. So that lust was still in him. Mm -hmm. To be regarded, counted as somebody big. Mm -hmm. So it's the message of the Lord. Mm -hmm. For those who, who want to be somebody, who were counted as somebody before you were saved, there could be spirits walking with you. Amen. Spirits of pride and ego. Of arrogance. Amen. Those same spirits, though you're, you are a believer. Amen. That you want to use the things of God in an untoward way to bring attention to your, your, yourself, to enhance your base of power. And so your money perish with you. The word of the Lord says, amen. And so it is It is the spirit of the thing, amen. The, the spirit from that which God has given from the beginning, the Holy Spirit will always maintain. The Holy Spirit will always uphold. The Holy Spirit will always cause you to witness according to that which is, which is right, Amen. That's what the Holy Spirit does. But for those who resist the Holy Spirit, who love this present age, who loves the things that are of this, this world, who regard the, the wages of wickedness. Amen. You regard the, the, the wages of wickedness, that which is of the world. Amen. The, the, the Bible says, about people speaking in a smooth way. Oh Lord, help me to remember. I want to bring that passage of scripture to, to the people that, that, that they operate in a smooth way. Amen. The words are, are smooth. Their tongue is smooth. Amen. It, it is that which try to present that it is of the Lord, but it is, it is that which is of flattery. It is, it is that you, you did not renounce, denounce the world, the spirit of the world. It is actually trying to use that old spirit, that old serpent, <laughs> man, in your dealings with people. Mm -hmm. Amen. That flattery and all that, that stuff that, that the Bible, when the Bible says that the poison of asp, is under your tongue. That's what it's talking about. The devil is in your mouth. Mm -hmm. The devil is in your mouth. Holy Ghost. You, you're working with the devil in your mouth. Amen. To portray that it is the things of God, but it is the things of wickedness. It is to accrue things unto yourself. It is to network. Amen. To bless yourself, to make a name for yourself, to be a person of renown. <laughs> Man. Holy Ghost. To be a person. The Lord is destroying the spirit of Nimrod. 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 The spirit of Nimrod, a hunter before the Lord. The people that represent the spirit of, of renown, wanting to be renowned, wanting to be known, wanting to make a name of, for yourself, amen, that you are the chief, the chieftain of those who, who, who instigate, who plan, hallelujah, who receive thoughts and plans from the devil, to build the Tower of Babel. Hallelujah. Networking. We're in agreement. Let us go to. Let us take brick and bake it thoroughly. And let us take slime for mortar. And let us build a tower unto heaven. Holy Ghost. That, to confront God. To bypass the, the Kurbashata Bushat. The bypass 
the ways of the Lord. Let us go up another way. Let us destroy the platforms which are of the Lord. That is the spirit of Nimrod. God says, I'm dealing with that spirit in this hour. Hallelujah. That not only the, that the tower shall cease and, and the languages shall be confused. Hallelujah. You see it. And I see it, Holy Ghost. I see Kurubisha, the vision of the Lord. I see the people, Kurubisha, in the valley, Kurubisha, speaking and not understanding their language, the people that plot it against the Lord. That they, they, their languages are confused. Even the subtlety of their languages and the dialects, even the people that thought that they spoke the same language, that they are confused. Holy God, it's the spirit of confusion to destroy the spirit of Nimrod, to stop the Tower of Babel, that which is arrayed against the Lord. And for the Christian, that you were not to agree, amen, with those who were agreeing, amen, who were speaking the same thing, amen, the same thing about uh, 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 race, the same things about CRT, the same things about diversity, the same things about that, the, the founding, the founding fathers saying that they were wicked. Amen. You, you, Christians, you're not to agree. You got to break loose from that harness. Hopa Santa, the yoke. Holy Ghost. They were they were plowing you. They were plowing with you. Holy Ghost. They, they were beating your back. You Christians, hallelujah. You were working for the wrong side, and adding strength to their message. Amen. And so the Lord is confusing their language. And even I'm hearing the subtlety, the, the best that I'm, I'm hearing, I'm trying to relay, interpret what I'm hearing. He says, even the subtlety of that message. That, that craftiness, that smoothing, smoothness of tongue to, to blend messages which sound like messages which were of the Lord. That's what it is. I hear it, Lord, clearly. That, that, that the dialects, that's what he's saying, the dialects. And so the rubble of the Tower of Babel shall be a witness against those who have ever done that thing that they should not do that thing again. And for the children of God to know that there is that which is of the Lord and that which is not of the Lord. Amen. And that the Lord has to build the house. And the originator, the, the, the founder, the author, he has to be allowed to build all things. For the Bible declares that he that builds all things is the Lord. Amen. That the Lord builds the house, the true house, which is the house which is of the Lord. Hallelujah. Every other house shall be brought into desolation, says the Lord. Thank you, Father, for that word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.